and underway at 12.55 in the afternoon. A fast day ahead in the mountains, lots of climbing and probably an aggressive stage. All the leaders' jerseys there at the front, mm -hmm. Well Van Aert in yellow and blue, Bosnagen in green, Hater in white and Pierre Roland in the blue and white jersey as the leader of the King of the Mountains. There's a few riders starting to get dropped from that front group of riders. Odia has just gone. Riders just trying to stay in the group. Ride well, ride carefully. The pace being driven on predominantly by our by the term, team of Traxega Fredo. Jasper Stoyven setting the pace. They've got three riders in here. So a good situation for the team of Trek Sega Fredo, and they've got some strong riders in here. Tom Scoynes, who we may remember, has worn the King of the Mountains in the Tour de France. Kenny Ellison, who's a fantastic climber. As we go up here to Mark Donovan, he's 23 years of age. He comes from Penrith in the north of England, so he's used to the climbs. Been a pro with Team Sunweb since 2020. His contract ends at the end of 2022. He's just been given the gap now, so the board comes up to give him an idea of how it's going. No wins in his career, but he's come very, very close to some pretty big victories. And the team do use him to go into the breakaways in the hilly days and try and win stages. So he's still pretty young. He rode the Tour de France uh, last season. He did finish the Tour, which is always good for a young rider because then they really do build up the strength and that engine is uh, able to be also a little bit stronger. He rode uh, La Vuelta back in 2020 and he finished fourth on a stage to Farapona and he also finished fifth on a stage to the Alta de la Covertia. So a rider who has figured in some pretty long breakaways in a Grand Tour and has almost uh, won a stage. His breakaways on those days, when he finished fifth to the Alta de la Colova. The last time we were in Vosgeny, Chris Froome and Richie Port were battling for the race victory. Chris Froome ultimately got it ahead of Richie Port. By that time, they were no longer teammates. They had, of course, been teammates for quite a while. And then there was that very public uh, falling out when Richie Port felt that Chris Froome had ridden against him. And then they went and made up over a cup of coffee somewhere in Monaco. Donovan caught by the chasers. He's now going to have to work really hard to get himself into that group because he was the leader. And now this pace has really substantially increased. Donovan will be able to do that. He's a, a really strong climber as we take a look at these two riders out of the back. One is Battistella wearing number 181. And he is with Velasco of the Astana team. It has not been a great season for the Astana team, has it? Gernalek is dropped. Also being dropped now and distance, another member of the Israel Premier Tech team. But this squad of Uno X are really setting their stall out now. And they're putting Jumbo Visma under some pressure. Anton Sharmik, a rider who led the Tour of Amman this season. They've obviously been told by their race director, let's put this race under massive pressure and let's see whether we can set Johannesson off to win the stage and take a jersey. This is Edvold Bosenhagen. Five stage wins in his career in the Dauphiné in the green jersey going backwards.
Well, this is not good news for Trek. Well, no, it is. Kenny Ellisond looked like he was being dropped and now goes to the back. Looked like he was getting dropped and jumps away to try and catch Mulberger. Pierre Roland immediately trying to get on the wheel. Well, Kenny Ellisond is a pure, pure climber. That's a stunning attack by the rider from Trek, Sega Fredo, and that has ejected a number of riders. This is Mulberger, leader of the race. If you've just joined us, 35.6 kilometres to go. We're on the climb of the Col de la Croix de Fer. We head towards the top of the Col de la Croix de Fer and Pierre Roland will want to do something about this because there's 15 points on offer at the top. Mulberger and Ellison have a conversation and they've decided to work together. Ellison, though, shaking his head. He's not impressed, is he? Is he? Mulberger's attacked and now Ellison's gone across to him and now they're not working which seems crazy, crazy. Le Fay is going to bring it all back together. Ellison is rightly shaking his head. Here's our leaders. A few other hellos before we get to the top of the climb. Greg Peters, thanks for watching the race. And now it's all back together. Victor Le Fay, who wasn't feeling good yesterday, decides to continue with the workload. So five leaders again, despite the jumping around that's been going on. Here Roland getting himself set and focused, ready for an assault on another 15 points. The yellow and blue jersey's gone. The lights have finally gone out on Wout van Aert. Only 1.4 kilometers from the top of the climb and van Aert just doesn't have it. Well, he's held on for what is a huge climb. 29 kilometers this mountain and Wout nearly got to the top. We're going to have a new leader by the looks of things of the Criterium Dauphiné. Wout has gone. Five leaders, two from Movistar. Elisond of Trek Segafredo in the white and red, predominantly white. Victor Le Fay there in the red and white of Cofidis. And another attack from Movistar. What are they trying to do? It's a question we quite often ask. 300 metres to go. Elisond sprinting for all he's worth, so is La Fay. This rider's had a wonderful Dauphiné this season. Mulberger there, Verona sitting third wheel. 200 metres to go to an important sprint. Roland getting himself set. Wilco Kelderman is now distanced. The rider who rode so well in the Giro d'Italia in support of Jai Hindley. Here's the sprint now for the King of the Mountains. Pierre Roland looking for the 15 points at the top of the Col de la Croix de Fer. There it is. Pierre Roland takes the 15 points at the top. 59 points now for Pierre Roland. A wonderful job for the rider from B&B Hotels. Victor Le Fay may well have taken some points there, so we'll just add those in as well. There are 37 points on offer tomorrow. So we need a rider to have accumulated 22 points by the end of today. 
and Pierre Roland not to take any more. And that would be that he would have won this year's King of the Mountains. Lafay jumps across. We've lost Van Aert, we've lost Catania. Caruso now in sixth place. There are so many riders in with a chance of winning this race as Carlos Verona goes flying downhill in the most aero tuck he's allowed to do. Elisson jumping across to him again. They're clearly worried about this diminutive climber from Trek Segafredo, who sneaks through on the inside. Look at the way, oh, look at the way that Elisson's wheels were just bouncing around in the middle there. He is going flying, he's had enough. Elisson just dropping like a stone. Well, you heard earlier, Thierry Gouverneau, look at that wonderful lake on the left-hand side. Thierry Gouverneau saying that there will be gaps on this descent because there are riders who will be prepared to go flat out down here and there will be riders who really don't want to. So there will be, behind the scenes, some trading of riders. DSM particularly are good at doing that. They find young riders. They have got what they perceive to be their way of doing things. And if a young rider wants to leave, then they'll allow them to be bought out of their contract. So the likes of, you've seen Mark Hirschi, you've seen Michael Matthews and others go to other teams. And it happens with other squads as well. So there is a little bit of trading of riders that goes on, but it's not a open thing where you see, for example, in soccer, we have transfer Monday where all the riders are transferred by that day. It doesn't happen like that in cycling. Simon Guglielmi, the French rider from Arkea Samsic, working extremely hard, isn't he, to try and get across to uh, Kevin Vermarka and then join up with the leaders. He's a 24-year-old rider. We've seen him in the Giro d'Italia last year, finish fifth on a stage. He's had no wins in his career, but he senses a bit of an opportunity here to get across to Vermarka, who is ripping his way across to the leaders. This is a wonderful job by Kevin Vermarka, an American rider on the move for Team DSM. Now we see an attack. Verona trying to attack Kenny Ellison, and Verona's now shifting forward. Verona clearly just wants to be on his own today. This is a big acceleration. And Elisond, well, he's not going to work, is he? He's just going to sit there and he's going to wait and he's going to... If you're going to ride this way, I'm just going to sit on the wheel Look at the smooth tarmac here. Ready for the Tour de France. It's absolutely stunning. A lot of riders in this area at the moment, riding the Alpe d'Huez and other climbs. So we're staying in our hotel last night. You go out on the road, you see loads of riders. And right now they must be thinking, wow, the tarmac in this region is incredible. They're just going to share the pace making on this final climb of the day. They're about to turn onto the final rise to Vosgeny. Now we come off the route of stage 12 of the Tour de France. In the Tour in July, we would see the riders go to Bourgdoison and onto Monte de Vosgeny. And Carlos Verona accelerates again. Elisand is unable to respond. Verona wants his first victory as a professional bike rider. He's been promising it for so long. Could be that the accelerations behind by Vengegaard are just going to bring this race too close for comfort. Branham McNulty riding his way across. The group of Caruso and Jack Haig are almost back on the wheel of that group containing 
the favourites. Vengegaard, O'Connor, Roglic, Esteban Chavez, Tobias Johannesson. David Gordou has sprinted his way across as well. And now Vengegaard is starting to rip it up a little bit more. Look at them sprinting. They've caught Kenny Elisand. Louis Menkes sprinting on the back. The South African rider in the neon yellow of Intermarche Wanty Gobert. Look at Vengegaard go. It's just a full torque effort looking round to see what damage he's doing. Esteban Chavez leaves a gap. Johannesson starting to suffer. Louis Menkes trying to just ride his way back on. The virtual leader of this race is Primoz Roglic. He was third overall at the start of today's stage. Look at the face of David Gordou. Grimacing with so much effort. This is Jack Haig. This is Ellie Sont. Theo Gegenhardt. It's full blows on the climb of Vosgeny this afternoon. 37 seconds for Verona. Is it going to be heartbreak yet again? Vengegaard started fourth overall. He's riding his way into second place. Carlos Verona, a little bit of respite now. One and a half kilometers to go as he makes his way into Vosgeny. And here goes the attack of Primoz Roglic. Roglic now accelerates furiously. Ben O'Connor desperately sprinting to get on terms, but Roglic with the hands on the drops sprints away. Roglic is absolutely flying towards the Vosgeny ski station. Vengegaard has set it up perfectly. And look at the speed of Primoz Roglic. Well, if there was any question about that knee injury, he's just answered every single question. 17 seconds and Verona looks around. Verona now senses that there is a whirlwind approaching. Slightly downhill now. The final part of this climb is 7%. One kilometer to go for Carlos Verona, who is sensing that there is someone chasing and Verona searching for his first ever World Tour win. Can Roglic catch him? He's going for time. Roglic rails it round that turn. What a finish this is going to be. Carlos Verona getting set for what would be the first victory in the World Tour for Movistar this season and at 29 years of age would be his first ever World Tour win. Roglic takes the right-hand turn. We can see Verona just in front of him. 450 metres to go for Carlos Verona of Spain. Roglic might have left it a little bit too late. But he's going to take time and he's going to be the leader. 500 metres to go for Primoz Roglic. We're almost at the finish line now. A left-hand turn with 400 metres to go. Here comes Carlos Verona. Is he going to do it? Has he got enough in the legs? Roglic is riding with fire and fury. But this man may well be about to take the victory he's been searching for for his entire career. Roglic sprinting hard, but Carlos Verona finally, at 29 years of age, wins his first ever pro victory and the first World Tour victory for Movistar this season. Behind them, it's Primoz Roglic. He's going to take the yellow and blue jersey. And what a performance that was on Vosgeny. Behind them, the sprint goes on. And Jonas Vengegaard, who teed it up, is going to finish third on the stage. Ben O'Connor takes fourth. Behind them now, Tobias Johannesson of Uno X. He's going to take the next place. David Gordou is almost biting his handlebars. Esteban Chavez, David Gordou. Theo Gegenhardt, flat out, 
loses 48 seconds on the winner. And then it is the Bahrain victorious duo. Haig and Caruso. Carlos Verona finally wins a race in his career. He has been the worker for so many top bike riders, but he finally takes the top step of the podium. Conrad crosses the line now. Matteo Jorgensen crosses the line. Kevin Vermarka, who tried so hard to win that stage today. Behind them, Steph Krass. Then it's Branham McNulty, I think, just crossing the line behind, shakes his head again. That was some finish. Carlos Verona looks around, sees no one behind him, and finally he's able to do this. An emotional moment. So much of his career has been about supporting Alejandro Valverde and others. But he finally does it. Here's the arrival of Catania, who's peddling squares. Ethan Hayter, who's just ridden to the top. Here comes Stephen Kreiswijk. Carlos Verona has also been given the most aggressive rider of the day award. No surprises there, he rode superbly.